<laughs> Smooth 3D prints. Everybody wants them. How do you get them? Unfortunately, we're still a little ways off from at-home hobby 3D printers being able to print something like this. Though I will say lately, we're getting pretty close. So in this video, I wanna cover some of the different settings I'm using across the different programs like Orca Slicer or Bamboo or even Cura and some of the different machines I'm using to help optimize the best possible smoothest 3D prints you can currently get and that I'm getting. Let's get right into it. Now, before we actually get into the settings themselves, I want to lead this with saying, what printer are you printing your stuff on? And I'm not really concerned about the brands or what type of model you're using. I'm actually talking about what physical style printer are you using? Thinking practically about this will definitely help you plan when slicing your files and arranging them on the build plate because how is the printer itself moving? Not all printers are created equal. Here I have a standard Prusa Mark IV. This is lovingly referred to as a bed slinger. What I mean by that is the print bed actually moves back and forth. Now think about that when you're actually trying to print something on it. If you have something standing up, I don't know, let's say this devil fruit here, as it moves forward and back, it's gonna print pretty good at the bottom, but as you start to get a little bit taller, if you're printing too quickly, there's actually gonna be a very, very little wobble. And this gets really bad if you're printing something tall and skinny like a sword or a dagger blade. If I was to stand something like this up and it's printing forward and back, the tip of the blade's gonna start to come out a little weird because it's gonna have that little vibration and wobble. Now you can mitigate this by slowing the printer down, slowing down your print settings, and we're gonna look at all of that, and also how you're gonna arrange the parts on the bed. That can affect the quality greatly. The other style to consider is a Core XY machine. Now, some of these are built a little different, but the basic concept of them is the bed doesn't move left and right. It only moves up and down. On some printers, the head itself moves up and down. On like the new uh, Orange Storm Giga, you guys have probably seen that all over my social media, sorry. But in this instance, the bed only lowers itself down while the print head moves in an X and Y pattern and makes the print. This means the bed isn't slinging back and forth and the only vibrations you have to account for is how quickly this print head is moving and is it wobbling the printer. See my camera shaking just by me doing that. Just by the nature and design of these printers, they can print faster with a lot less wobble and defects in the print. Now again, we haven't started talking about extrusion and temperatures and what types of filaments, any of that. Just the machines themselves and how they print can definitely affect the quality and what types of prints and the speeds you're throwing at them. If I'm printing something like this and it's only getting lower down while the print head moves around, it's typically gonna come out a lot smoother or it can print faster and give you the same quality as a bed slinger. And now as printers are advancing, there's so much more with vibration dampening and calibrations and all of this that the machines do right out of box to help mitigate these little vibrations and issues that are gonna cause defects in the print. But I wanted you guys to just understand the two different types because as we go through Orca and start looking Looking at some of the settings, you're going to want to think of what type of printer you're using. If it's a bed slinger, you might want to position the part differently and slow it down for a better quality. Or if it's a Core XY and it can handle higher speeds, then you might be able to print it a little faster. But let's get into the program. Okay, so for this little explainer, we're going to be talking about two different programs, but this actually covers a multitude of programs. I'm mostly going to be using Orca Slicer. Now, if you guys want a full tutorial on Orca Slicer and a bunch of settings I'm not really going to talk about in this, go check out this this video, yeah, this video right here, it's a whole breakdown on how to install it, do all of that fun stuff. But if you're familiar with Orca Slicer, you might also know that it is a clone of Bamboo Slicer, Bamboo Lab Studio, which was just a clone of Prusa Slicer. So understanding how to use the, the user interface in Orca will let you use Bamboo, which I also have, and also Prusa Slicer. We're also gonna be going back and forth to Cura or Ultimate or Cura. And if you've ever gotten an Elegoo or a Creality printer and downloaded its version of Cura or Creality Slicer or Elegoo Slicer, it's just a clone of the standard Ultimaker Cura. The user interface is gonna look the same and all the settings are pretty much gonna be the same. So if you're only using Elegoo Cura, well, watching me use normal Cura is gonna be the same thing. I'm mostly gonna be using Orca, but Elegoo does have a little bit of a better user interface, so I am gonna jump a little bit back and forth. But there's not a lot of settings we're gonna be changing. Again, we're just gonna be taking into consideration the types of printers you're gonna be using and paying better attention to how we're positioning the prints and the supports we're using. So let's just 
get into it. This is Orca Slicer right when you load it up. Depending on the printers you loaded, you can see I have a multitude of different printers I'm going through. Uh, right here is just the Creality K1 Max because this is probably what people ask me about the most. What are your settings on your K1 Max? I'm gonna show you, they're not complicated. There is an advanced option, but we're gonna expand on that later. And we're gonna also compare that to what Cura looks like. And I just have a standard Ender 3 loaded up right here. And you can see these are all the standard uh, basic settings. You can change the infill, the pattern, the thickness, the quality, all of that. So if it's different, we're gonna go back and forth, but realistically, Orca and Cura are gonna give you the exact same options, really where you're gonna be able to go up here and then change your print settings and that's just gonna adjust a bunch of stuff. Uh, you don't really need to worry about any of this on the quality settings right now. Your strength, this is good to think about right now. And I actually am surprised it doesn't give you uh, the infill density here, only the walls. So you know what? Let's just go and expand to the advanced settings only to show you guys what I'm changing and how I'm getting my prints to come out smoother than apparently some of you guys are getting. I don't know why, but that's just how it's happening. So we're gonna open up advanced here and then we're gonna go over to Cura and we're also gonna go over to, don't know where it is, show custom, custom. Just because it's easier to visualize and see, we're actually gonna go and use this 3D model of a Mew Pokemon. You can see, see it back here, same model. We're gonna use that for just uh, ease of use and it's just cuter to look at. So right off the bat, you need to decide, do you want this to come out really fast and maybe sacrifice a little bit of that quality because you don't care, maybe you're printing in a pink filament and you just want it to be this cute little Pokemon that sits on the counter or whatever. Or do you want it to come out as nice as possible because you want it to be nice and pretty and smooth? Well, right off the bat, let's go with as nice as possible so we can up the quality a little bit. I'm not really adjusting much in terms of quality. I'm letting the slicer profiles do that for me. And that is a big change in recent years that a lot of people I don't feel are caught up with. It used to be about trading profiles and downloading other people's settings, but let the program do its job now. There's been so much refinement in terms of Orca and Cura and Ult and all of this stuff. The profiles that are in the programs are really, really good. All you're adjusting is maybe your speeds, your supports, and a couple little small things, but let the program and the printer do its job. I am, however, gonna adjust two things. I'm gonna, in the strength setting, I'm gonna look at walls and I'm gonna look at infill. Now, 15% infill, that's a lot for something small like this. I can drop this down to five because it's not getting handled. I'm not picking it up. It's not a prop, it's not a sword, it's not a cosplay. It's just this little thing on the counter that's just gonna sit there and look cute. So you can save some time and material by dropping down your infill and we're gonna go and review that anyway in our Slice Pro uh, preview. And I'm gonna adjust my infill. Uh, I like gyroid infill. It's theoretically the strongest infill. I think there is a stronger one out now, but I like using gyroid. Uh, you can read up on all of them. It usually tells you the differences of them or you can just Google it, but I like my gyroid. Now we're gonna talk about walls in a minute when we're talking about some props you might wanna print and making them stronger. But in terms of just something like this, three walls standard, you can even save some material and probably drop it down to two, but I'd still stick with three, especially at a finer quality. And speeds. I'm gonna leave speeds mostly alone. You can slowly increase these if you want. They are much, much easier to adjust in Cura. There's literally just print speed right here. You can make it 100 if you want, depending on the printer. And again, this is gonna come from experience. You are, there is no one size fits all, especially when I was talking about the way you would position a print. If you have a bed slinger doing this back and forth and you want it to come out nice, we'll drop that speed down. But if it's, if it's something flat or you know maybe like this devil fruit, it's just sitting there flat and has a big base, you can print this a lot faster because this, this, isn't, this isn't gonna wobble. Now support. I can make video after video talking about support placement and interface and painting your own supports and do it. it you're just gonna have to learn. But in Orca, you're gonna have to go and turn supports on. Where Cura, it's typically automatically turned on. I lied right to your face. We're gonna turn that on too. Now the big debate, tree and normal supports. Well, why aren't you using tree? I heard tree was better. No, it's not, it's different. There are different applications for it. For more organic prints or more complicated prints, sometimes tree supports are bit better for getting out certain angles because it's just not gonna fill the whole print with supports. Other times, I'll just run standard supports because honestly, a lot of times they're quicker and we can slice both of them to see if it's uh, material usage, if it's saving us time, just the difference in it. As for any other settings I'm adjusting, sometimes I'll just do a brim on the inside or outside to give it a little bit better adhesion. I might do a raft, cures a little bit better with 
that with your build type plate adhesion. Uh, there's RAF, there's none. This is gonna print a little base on under the print or around the print to give it some stability. And if you're one of those people who says, oh, don't use a raft, it's a band-aid, learn to actually print, shut up, get out of my comments. If it prints, if it lets you print successfully, your printer's printing, there's nothing you need to adjust, stop it. So with those settings adjusted, let's just slice it. Let's go ahead and while that slices, we're gonna adjust everything over in Cura. So we'll do the same layer height. We'll change this down to a five. We'll change this to a gyroid, wherever it is. Uh, printing temperature, this is gonna be filament dependent, obviously, whatever it's recommended. Uh, your print speed, it wants the Ender 3 to be at 50 millimeters a second. I know from experience at a bed slinger like an Ender 3 on a small print like this, I can get away with 70 millimeters a second. And again, this is just gonna come from you trial and error, testing it out. So we'll generate some supports, we'll do everywhere, angles, all of that. I'm happy with all of this, let's hit slice. Let this be a really cool example of how far 3D printing has come in terms of the speeds and reliability. This is a standard Ender 3, and I did speed it up a little bit to 70 millimeters a second. I could probably get away with 100, it's fine. But this is gonna take 10 hours and use 52 grams of filament. Compare this to the K1 Max that's gonna use 10 grams less of filament, and this could be in its supports, this could be on the infill itself, this could be a couple little differences that we could try to dissect, it's not worth it, but it's gonna print this in three hours, and I believe that too. Seven hour difference because this K1 Max is a Core XY printer, and it can print a lot faster and more reliable, and I could probably even cut it down from there. So my suspicions were correct, Orca is using less support material, you can see that the uh, the percentage of support is only 18% here. We're over here in Cura. If you highlight this, you can see that the supports are 29% of the time. So it is taking a little bit longer on those supports and it is also using less material. You can see just barely, there are more squiggles in the Cura supports and the Orca supports are a little more spread out. But we also dropped our infill density so the print doesn't have as much plastic in it and you can see how much space it doesn't take up, but it's still nice and strong. It's a small little print, but always go and review your prints. This is gonna be, give you the best quality and survivability. If I saw that this was printing and maybe there were no supports under a part of the tail, especially where it starts to like begin, right here down at the bottom, pay attention to that. Make sure it's properly supported so as it starts to actually try to print that part of the tail or whatever you're printing, it actually comes out good. So, Mew is cute and all, but how about we print something that's gonna take a little bit more consideration in terms of the strength or the quality I want it to come out. So let's print a dagger. Which dagger? This one. I already printed it, but I had to think really carefully about how I wanted to print this, what I was gonna do with it, and how strong I wanted it to be. I'm working on making this dagger glow. I wanna put lights in it and make it light up, so that means I shouldn't have any infill, but I also want it to be strong at a nice quality. So am I gonna print it flat? Am I gonna print it like this? Am I gonna print it flat like that? You have to really think about this when you're selecting and arranging your models, because again, there is no cookie cutter answer to how you're gonna position everything. You're not gonna print every single thing flat like this because the quality and the uh, things you're trying to do with it are gonna change every single time. Oh, I missed a piece of support. So I've gone and switched printers. I now have my Creality CR10 Max. It's a little bit of an old printer in terms of just standards nowadays. Uh, there's a new CRM4. It's just a big printer. I wanted to be able to fit everything at once, but we're just, we're gonna play with that, don't worry. I said I wanted this dagger to be hollow. So what settings are gonna use to do that? If I want a prop to be hollow and or just make it stronger in general. So let's talk about this handle real fast. That's what I wanna print first. So let's get this standing up like that. Now, if you want quality out of a print, stand it up. Your Z is always gonna provide the best type of quality. And I will show you when I slice this exactly what I mean. And slice that, and then we'll come over here, and then we'll slice this like that. This looks pretty good. This is gonna come out more or less how I wanted it to, but if we were to lay it flat and go and look at this setting, you can see that this is this is gonna look a little weird. This is called top layering, and this isn't what you want in a print. This is where it can't really figure out how to finish the detail on the top, where the side of this claw is now all jumbled up. If you look over here, printing it standing up is gonna give it a much better quality and just a cleaner look. So definitely consider this when you're printing stuff. However, printing it like this flat is gonna make it a lot stronger because now the layers go through the entire handle instead of being stacked like bricks where you could easily snap it in half. So I want these to be the best quality possible. So I'm gonna do my best to stand them up just like this and arrange them. But like I was talking about before, I want them to be hollow. So first let's go ahead and put this at a better quality. And then we're gonna go back over to strength. 
Now your walls are the actual shell of the print. If you want it to be stronger, but drop or completely get rid of your infill, you want to increase your walls. So let's put this at a four, we can even do a five, and you come down here and completely get rid of your infill. And if we slice this, this is now gonna give me theoretically a hollow 3D print. Now there is a channel in here for a little rod to fit in it, but if I zoom in, you can see that it's actually hollow. Now I have five walls. Is that actually gonna be transparent? Is it gonna let light through? This is four walls and you can, you can see through this. This is, this is gonna be fine when it comes time to actually putting LEDs in it. You'll be able to see through this great, possibly even with paint, but that's for a different video. But how strong or weak or the walls you're using on a print aren't typically going to affect the quality. It's going to be your settings. It's going to be how thick your layer, uh, layer height is. Is it going to leave layer lines? Is it a bed slinger? Are you printing too fast? Is your temperature on your filament proper? Because that's a whole other bag of cats. But again, trust what the programs are telling you to do. If you're using bamboo filament on a bamboo, select your bamboo filament. If you're using silks, make sure you select your silk profile. You can dial a couple things in if you're having some issues, but nine times out of 10, whatever profile you select for that filament, it's gonna be more than enough to you know, get the print done. Now, one thing I wanna say in terms of filament is the color and what type of filament you're printing with. All of my stuff is PLA, whether it's matte PLA, PLA plus, or silk PLA. Different color filaments give you different results. Silk filament typically looks great. This is always gonna print super shiny and look very smooth because it's meant to throw light. It's meant to be nice and shiny. So the more angles that are shining that reflectivity back at you, it's gonna look better. This actually benefits from having certain amounts of layer lines. Not too many, but it's gonna hide a lot of those defects because the entire thing is shiny. Whereas standard gloss PLAs, this is a Sunlu PLA Plus in gray. This is gonna show layer lines if the printer isn't doing a great job. If you're printing too fast, if you don't have your settings too well, maybe it's wobbling back and forth. These were printed in the same quality on my Prusa and then on my Bamboo P1S. And as good as that Prusa did, you can still see some layer lines there. And this was at one of the higher qualities that the Prusa could deliver. It's still incredibly smooth, but there are definitely some defects on it. Now I could go and dial it in, I could slow it down, I could maybe, maybe I'm over extruding a little bit, under extruding a little bit, but my P1S, which is a Core XY machine, just did so much better right out of the box because the print wasn't moving at all. It was just lowering down as it printed and it came out. This is probably one of the smoothest 3D prints I've just ever seen in plastic. Obviously resin prints are amazing, but we're not talking about that. And the third style I talk about is matte PLAs. Now I don't have any finished printed matte PLA things here. Uh, I just don't have them, but a matte PLA is gonna look smoother than any of these other ones because it's not throwing that light back at you. It's gonna hide layer lines a lot better. If you were to take, if this was printed in a matte PLA and it looked nice and smooth, hit it with a coat of primer or paint, you're gonna see the layer lines because now there's something for the light to be thrown back at you. In terms of a matte or a flat filament, it's gonna trap that light in and not throw it back at you. So things are gonna typically look smoother. So if you're just trying to print something for display or you don't want it to look layer liney, use a silk because it's gonna throw so much back at you or use a matte PLA because you're just, you're just not gonna be able to tell. Oh, also, isn't this a cool filament? Look, it changes colors. Ooh, science, I love it. So those are kind of the only settings I'm changing, guys. As printers are getting better and better, we have our bamboos, our X1 carbons, our Creality K1s, even our Prusa Mark IVs. As these printers are just advancing, the print profiles are getting better and better, the programs are getting better and better, and the printers are getting better and better. So videos like this are slowly but surely gonna become more and more obsolete. I think a big problem people have is not considering how the printer is going to be printing that part. Again, the orientation, how fast is it moving? Can I slow it down? Can I speed it up? Think about the way the machine's gonna actually operate and that can definitely help you extract some quality from these printers. Especially if you built the printer yourself, if you had to assemble a little bit, is everything tight? Did you tighten everything up properly? Is it on a desk that wobbles and moves or is it bolted firmly to the ground? Because even these little things could definitely affect your print quality. But that's pretty much it. Any more information I would try to give you guys in this video would just be me talking about stuff that I actually don't even adjust in the programs. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in the video, please leave some comments down below. I'll see which kind of 
kind of questions you guys are asking. Maybe there are some settings that you wanted me to dive farther into and I can make a follow-up video. But if you're more interested in the settings and things I'm doing for certain builds or how, you know, the solo leveling dagger, or the devil fruits or the Iron Man suit, I usually talk about the settings I'm using in those videos. And if I don't go into the settings in that video, it's because I'm using just stock profiles and filament settings in the programs. I'm just letting the programs do what they want and it, it, uh, it usually works out. If you guys found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. This way you can stay up to date on everything I have coming out and you don't miss a video or upload. Also, for those of you interested, I have just completely revamped my Patreon and also launched YouTube memberships. There's links for both of those down below featuring behind the scenes content and travel vlogs and private live streams and all this awesome stuff. If you're interested in supporting me in that way, please go check that out. If not, I'm still thankful you watched this video. Every view counts and I appreciate all of them. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.